দর্শক সবাইকে আমন্ত্রণ জানাচ্ছি দি আমেরিকান সেন্টার গরি সম্পৃতি অনুষ্ঠানে আর আজকে আপনাদেরকে আমরা নিয়ে এসেছি মুক্তিযুদ্ধ জাদুঘরে এবং এটার কারণও আছে কারণটা হচ্ছে আপনারা অনেকে হয়তো আর্চার কে ব্লাডের নাম শুনেছেন আর্চার কে ব্লাড উনিশশো সালে মার্কিন কনসুলেটে কনসাল জেনারেল ছিলেন এবং তিনি বাংলাদেশে সংঘটিত অপরাধ এবং সেই গণহত্যা যুদ্ধের বিবরণ তিনি লিখে পাঠিয়েছিলেন আমেরিকান সরকারের কাছে জনমত গড়ে তুলেছিলেন এবং সেই টেলিগ্রামগুলোই খুবই ফেমাসলি নোন অ্যাজ দি ব্লাড টেলিগ্রামস এবং আজকে আমেরিকার রাষ্ট্রদূত মার্শা বার্নি ক্যাট এই মুক্তিযুদ্ধ জাদুঘরে সেটারই একটি স্মারক তুলে দিতে এসেছেন আমরা সেই সুযোগে তার সাথে আজকে কথা বলবো তাই আপনারা আমাদের সাথেই থাকবেন সবাইকে আমন্ত্রণ জানাচ্ছি দি আমেরিকান সেন্টার গরি সম্প্রীতি অনুষ্ঠানে দর্শক শুরুতেই যেমন বলছিলাম আজকে দি আমেরিকান সেন্টার গরি সম্প্রীতিতে আমাদের সাথে থাকবেন আমেরিকান অ্যাম্বাসেডার মার্শা বার্নি ক্যাট আমরা এখন তার সাথেই আছি অ্যাম্বাসেডার মার্শা বার্নি ক্যাট ওয়েলকাম টু আওয়ার শো অ্যান্ড থ্যাংক ইউ ফর জয়নিং এস টুডে থ্যাংক ইউ ফর হ্যাভিং মি আই গেস দিস ইজ ইউর ফার্স্ট টাইম ইন বাংলাদেশ সো হোয়াটস ইউর ইনিশিয়াল অবজারভেশন অ্যাবাউট বাংলাদেশ অ্যান্ড ইটস পিপল এভরি ওয়ান হু অ্যাস মি দ্যাট কোয়েশ্চেন গেটস এক্স্যাক্ট সেম অ্যান্সার বিকজ আই বিন ওভার ওয়েলমড বাই দ্য ওয়েলকাম হিয়ার Um, you have so many friends and admirers back in the States and they all told me, oh, you're going to really like it, people are friendly. Well, the friendliness could not have been exaggerated. I feel like I've been welcomed home, the welcome is so warm. Uh, you have been to South Asia before uh, as a Foreign Service Officer, I guess. Uh, yes. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yes, in fact, um, when I joined the Foreign Service, my goal was to stay overseas as much as possible, not work in Washington. And uh, South Asia was an early interest of mine. And so um, when I was looking for my second tour in 1983, I bid on jobs that were open here in Dhaka and in Kathmandu. My career counselor urged me to bid on a third job in Marseille, France, which I did, and that's where I was assigned. I was really disappointed. Now, you wanted to come to I wanted Bangladesh? I wanted to come to Dhaka, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Now, it was wonderful living in France. But I always tell people it was worth the wait. Because I lived in India in the early 1990s, and I have visited Nepal, Sri Lanka, uh, Pakistan. I've been to the Khyber Pass and looked over at Afghanistan, but have not until now made it to Bangladesh. Um, tell us about your childhood. Why did you uh, grow up uh, in the States? Yes, I grew up in New Jersey, which is just south of New York City. And um, I grew up near the ocean. And to the east were, uh, was the Atlantic Ocean, to the west were vegetable farms and horse raising countries. So it's a really beautiful part of the country. But I wanted to travel. And part of the reason I wanted to travel right from the beginning was because a lot of our high school students, uh, excuse me, our school students um, were children whose parents were in the U.S. military. So they'd lived in Germany and Japan especially and other places in the U.S. They envied me because I was born and raised in the same place. I envy them because they had been to so many parts of the world uh, and I hadn't. So uh, when you were growing up, did you ever think that you will come to Bangladesh, this beautiful country, as the ambassador? Never. In fact, I never thought I'd be a diplomat. I loved school and I loved history, so I'm really thrilled to be here at the museum today. Um, talking about history, you are here to hand over uh, the famous blood telegram. and. Uh, why this is important um, for the State Department and how do you see this uh, Bangladesh-US friendship? Archer Blood was the Consul General here when the war broke out, or actually even before the war bro broke out. And he, it's all of our responsibilities as diplomats 
to report what we see happening in the host country where we are and to report that back to Washington accurately, which he and his officers were doing. Unfortunately, our president and our secretary of state, Richard Nixon and Henry Kissinger, were not paying attention. They had other objectives. And so Archer Blood did something very brave. He and his officers wrote about the atrocities that were going on here and further said, you know, sirs, you are, you're making a mistake. You need to, to readjust our policy based on what's happening here. We must speak out. And he had 29 people sign on to that telegram. Now, in those days, if you dissented like that, your career suffered for it. But I'm pleased to say a number of the other signatories were able to have, well, Archer Blood had a full career, but um, one of the dissenters, Howard B. Schaefer, was our ambassador to Bangladesh in the mid 1980s. So it led to a tradition in our service where we actually give people awards each year for dissenting. You have to do it creatively, constructively, and honestly, but we want people to speak out to make sure we're getting all points of view considered. And Archer K. Blood, he was a brave, brave man, a great friend of, uh, friend of Bangladesh indeed. And the American Center Library is named after uh, Archer K. Blood. It is in the end the people to people ties that are so much more powerful. And that, along with our shared history and our shared love for de democracy, I think has made for such a long and rich uh, friendship between our two governments, but much more importantly, between our two peoples. The seed of friendship was sown by our Turkey blood. Um, let us hear about um, uh, the culture in the U.S. It's very different uh, from Bangladesh. A couple of things. I, mean, I think one of the main differences in the culture happens to center around how much Americans really like change. You know, I live overseas and every year when I go home, something drastic has changed, like the phone system suddenly is different or what have you. And I think people embrace change maybe a little too much. And I think here I've seen that there's some very old traditions. I mean, you have a, you know, millennium old, you know, millennial uh, long history. And so I think there's a tendency to cherish tradition more here. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that I think we have in common is such diverse populations. Um, here the diversity is especially along religious lines. In the United States, we've, we literally are the world. And so, with each wave of immigrant who has come to the United States, we've seen borrowing in our language, in our uh, traditions, in our culture. I mean, you're as likely to go to a holy festival or celebrate Chinese New Year or Sanco de Mayo from Mexico because we, we older Americans, if you will, embrace all of those traditions that have come after us. Absolutely, uh, as they say that the, uh, America is a melting pot. Uh, but Bangladesh is also a place overflowing with vibrant culture, great food, music. Uh, so what impresses you most about Bangladesh? I have to tell you, this has been a weekend of celebrating uh, you know, International Women, uh, Women's Day. And uh, over the weekend, I got to see my first uh, Bangladeshi traditional dances. Our next door neighbor <clears throat> was a ballerina. And I used to kind of make fun of her. I thought what she did was kind of, you know, you didn't like dancing? Well, I didn't like dancing then. I love it now. But watching her perform on the stage as part of Alvin Ailey's dance company, which is a very famous dance company in the U.S., I realized I may have missed the boat <laughs> in not pursuing dance. So of all the different performances and, and uh, presentations that I saw this weekend, it was the dance that really spoke to me. Ambassador, we will hear more about your experience in Bangladesh, but we have to take a short break. Dashok, Ambassador Barney Katesh Shatha Kotha Bolchi, Amra Chutra Kabiruti Nio, Amadha Shati Thakken, Phirbo Ke Chukhuna Muthe. দর্শক আপনারা দেখছেন দি আমেরিকান সেন্টার গৌরী সম্প্রীতি এবং সাথে খুব স্পেশাল গেস্ট আছেন আমাদের সাথে আমেরিকান অ্যাম্বাসেডর মার্শা বার্নিকাট ম্যাম ওয়েলকাম টু শো ওয়ান্স এগেইন দিস মিউজিয়াম ইজ বিউটিফুল ইট ইজ অ্যামেজিং এন্ড দে হ্যাভ আ ফ্যান্টাস্টিক বুক স্টোর আর ইউ অ্যান অ্যাভিড রিডার ডু ইউ রিড আ লট আই অ্যাম দো আই হ্যাভ টু অ্যাডমিট আ লট অফ হোয়াট আই রিড টুডে ইজ অনলাইন 
Um, but I still love the feel of a book in my hands. So yeah. what are you reading right now? Ah, funny you should ask. <laughs> I'm reading The Blood Telegram, which wow. is a book about Archer K. Blood's We have a copy work. here. <laughs> well, actually, this is the book by Archer K. Blood. This is next on my reading li list, Wow. Um, which is his story of what he experienced here in Bangladesh. Ambassador, you have mentioned about uh, the women, International Women's Day, uh, and the United States uh, has designated the whole month of March uh, to uh, commemorate the day. So why it is uh, important to celebrate this day internationally? You couldn't have asked that question in a better place. Why do we have museums? It's so that we can remember the past. Why do we have International Women's Day and Month? Why do we have African American History Month in the U.S.? It's to help educate people to issues and to the history that may otherwise have been lost in time. And so for me it's really important to be able to focus people's attention at least once a year on issues that we hope will then help them work towards a better future all year long. And also raise awareness. Uh, in, in Bangladesh we see um, people hold rallies, uh, mm -hmm. they uh, hold seminars, uh, you know, plays, uh, theater plays, uh, musical concerts uh, yeah. to raise awareness. Uh, they wear purple. I right. love this. You know, just by seeing everyone wearing purple, you see visibly, without a word being spoken, how important it is that people are are paying attention. So how people uh, back home uh, mm. celebrate this day? Yes, well, you know, we're very media driven in the United States. So um, everyone from news programs to documentaries to even the choice of movies that channels show will focus on women uh, during, during this month. Um, and of course, like Bangladesh, yeah, there'll be any number of, uh, of, uh, of seminars and, uh, and special courses offered. Ambassador, you've told me before that you've been to South Asia before. Yes. So that was your uh, career in India. Yes. Uh, would you like to share a bit a about that? Absolutely. Well, I have to tell you, um, going to anywhere in South Asia was a dream, as I said. Um, when I was assigned to India, I was one month into a year-long program at the University of Berkeley in California, where for a year, I was paid to study about South Asia. It was heavenly. I studied history and, and, and politics, but m even more importantly, I studied religion and comparative religion and art. It was the only art history course I ever took in my, in my career. Then something very special happened beyond everything else, and we had many, many special moments in India, and that was that we adopted our two sons from Shishubhavan, Mother Teresa's orphanage, one of her two orphanages in New Delhi. So Sunil and Sumit became a part of our family. And for me, I not only became the mother of, of sons, but I also, um, I believe, part of my family is now inextricably linked to South Asia. Ambassador, thank you very much. Uh, but we will have to take a short break. Uh, আমাদের দর্শক আপনারা দেখছেন দি আমেরিকান সেন্টার গৌরী সম্প্রীতি এবং আজকে খুবই স্পেশাল এপিসোড কারণ সাথে আছেন অ্যাম্বাসেডর মার্শা বার্নেকাত ম্যাডাম ওয়েলকাম ওয়ান্স এগেইন অ্যান্ড অ্যাজ উই ওয়ার টকিং ইউ টক অ্যাবাউট ইউর চাইল্ডহুড অ্যাবাউট ইউ ইউথ আই ওয়াজ জাস্ট থিঙ্কিং ইউ নো ওয়েন ইউ আর ইয়াং ডিড ইউ এভার এনভিশন দ্যাট ইউ উইল বিকাম অ্যান অ্যাম্বাসেডর ওয়ান ডে অর হোয়াট ওয়াজ ইউর ড্রিম রাইট না মাই ড্রিম ওয়াজ টু বিকাম এ টিচার অ্যান্ড আই লাভ স্কুল অ্যান্ড আই লাভ হিস্ট্রি সো আই ওয়াজ গোয়িং টু বি এ হিস্ট্রি টিচার And my parents were wonderful. Imagine, I was growing up not only a young girl in the 1960s, but also as a young African-American girl. So I was living through the, the civil rights movement. And my parents were wonderful. My mother had come from the South and was a descendant of slaves. My father came from um, New York, but was, his mother had been an indentured servant. And so for them, it was really important for all three of us to get a good education, and most importantly, to dream big and to really believe that we could be anything we set our minds out to be. So 
Um, I started out wanting to be a teacher. Um, when I graduated college, uh, they were actually laying off teachers at that point in time. It was through a random interview that I ended up working for a big corporation, Procter & Gamble, for two years, um, supervising people who made impact top job in Mr. Clean on a factory floor. So, you know, I think I, I'm anxious to visit some of the RMG plants here because I know what it's like to work in a factory. But that also convinced me that I really wanted to go back to school. That wasn't what I wanted to do for a living. And so I went back to school at Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. Georgetown happens to be an, 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 a university that trains a lot of diplomats. And it was there I met my first American diplomats. They urged me to be an intern, so I was an intern in Liberia. I really liked being overseas. I felt as though I could help people. I always wanted to help people, which is why I wanted to be a teacher. And I thought this could be a very um, good way to do that, as well as to see the world, because I was very anxious to travel as well. Uh, Ambassador of Bangladesh has a huge youth population and uh, they have big dreams, they are entrepreneurial, they, they are trying new stuff, uh, but you know like there are many distractions as well when you're young. Oh, yes. So we are at the end of our show so mm -hmm. I would like to request you to say uh, something uh, right. to the youth, youth of Bangladesh. Well I have a couple of messages. The first one is to dream big. I came from a family that was not well off. We were lower middle class um, I had to borrow money to go to college, but my parents were there to encourage me. You know, you need to find those people in your life, usually your parents, but sometimes others, who will encourage you and uplift you and show you different ways of getting to your goal. But as important as it is to have a goal, it's also important to be open to opportunities you would have never considered. If I had said, no, I can only be a teacher, I'm sure I would have ended up a teacher, but I wouldn't have been able to do this for a living. And it was by giving in to the possibility that uh, doors open for me. And I would also say, especially to the young women in the audience, my mother was very strict with her two daughters. She said, I want you to get an education and have a means to make your own money. You can have a career, you can have a profession, you can do whatever it is you want to do, but make sure that you too have something that you can bring to the family in terms of resources. And, you know, my mother is no more, but thank you, Mom, because that was the best advice I could have ever gotten. Um, I also want to urge uh, all of the young people, you are so much luckier than we were uh, when I was your age, in that you had the whole world before you. You can, you know, turn on a smartphone or go to an Internet cafe, and you can see how people your age live in the United States or in Senegal or in China. And you can connect with those people, not just you know, passively observe what they're doing, you have the absolute possibility to do what we dreamed of, and that is to make a world that is truly united. I'm confident that we all have the wherewithal to address all of the problems that plague humanity. What we're missing too often is the will. I believe you're, you're, the, you're going to be the first truly international generation, and you'll have the ability to do that. So, dream big. Ambassador, thank you very much. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to you and thank you very much for the inspirational message for the youth. Thank you. Doctor Kamra Ambassador Barne Katesh Sata Kotha Bol Chilam. Our Ambassador Jeta Bolen, the dream big. Boro Shopno Dekhen, Ebong Echarao, Jibonar Onnano Jee Opportunity Gula Ache, She Shujokta Oni Ben, Technology Ache, Technology Er Bebhor Koren, Kintu Shudhu Boshe Boshe Dek Ben Na, Cheshta Koren, Prithi Bide Bibhinno Pranthe Er Torunde Shate Connect Korte, আর আপনাদের সবার জন্য শুভ কামনা রইল আজকে এখানেই শেষ করছি সবাই ভালো থাকবেন ঢাকায় যুক্তরাষ্ট্র দূতাবাসের আমেরিকান সেন্টার বর্তমানে এনজিও এবং সমাজ সেবামূলক অলাভজনক প্রতিষ্ঠান থেকে প্রকল্প প্রস্তাবনা বা প্রজেক্ট প্রপোজাল গ্রহণ করছে এই প্রপোজালগুলো হতে পারে বাংলাদেশে সামাজিক শিক্ষা বিষয়ক অর্থনৈতিক উন্নয়ন পরিবেশ বিষয়ক এবং শিল্প ও সাংস্কৃতিক কর্মকাণ্ড কেন্দ্রিক সর্বোচ্চ 25000 ইউএস ডলার পর্যন্ত অর্থায়নের জন্য হতে পারে এই প্রপোজালগুলো আবেদন করার সময় শেষ হবে 30 এপ্রিল আবেদন জমা দেওয়ার প্রক্রিয়া সম্পর্কে বিস্তারিত জানার জন্য বারিধারার নতুন বাজারে আমেরিকান সেন্টারে আসুন অথবা ইউএস এমব্যাসি ওয়েবসাইট ভিজিট করুন www.dhaka.usembassy.gov/grants